Hello guys, welcome back to Sapima Tutorial. Today we have a lesson on quadratic expression and equation. Alright, we will start off with expression just as we have here on the board. Okay. Before we continue, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube and my Facebook page as well. Like my videos and share my contents to your friends. Thanks a lot. Considering quadratic equation and expression, it is important to take note that quadratic expression or quadratic equation is any equation of this form ax squared plus bx plus c quadratic equation must have the variable of that equation raised to the power of 2 all right then a and b and c are all constants numbers just like we have here we have 6 to so stand for a and then we have 14 we have 8 these are all constants but in a quadratic equation a must never be zero. If I have my A as zero, then this entire term will be cancelled out because zero multiplying x squared will give me zero. I will now have only these two guys remaining, which is now a linear equation or expression. All right? Now, to turn a quadratic expression, just like we have here, into an equation, all I need to do is to introduce a quality and a zero to the right hand side. So I'll be having a x squared plus b x plus c equal to zero. This is now an equation, quadratic equation. The x, which is the variable of the equation, still has a square. All right. So we we'll consider these examples. We'll start off with factorization of quadratic expression. From there, we we'll get to factorization of quadratic equation. From factorization, we get to complete square method general formula or almighty formula as some call it and they will consider graphical solution of quadratic equation to solve the first one all we need to do to factorize this expression is to check out for common term between the two of the terms i have here i have 5x and x squared so what i have here that i have here bring one outside for me, I take note that x squared means x times x, and 5x means 5 times x. I am using dots as my multiplication. Alright, so I have x2 here, I have x1 here. I can bring one of them outside since it is common here and here. Now, what do I have remaining here? If I had removed one, I will have only x remaining. Now, if I remove this x here, what will I have remaining this part? I will only have 5 remaining. I have factorized. This is the best way to factorize a quadratic expression. Let's consider the second one. x squared minus y squared. Alright, now this is called difference of two squares because x has a square, y also has a square and the both of them are separated by a, a, a negative sign or subtraction sign. Please take note that it is different from, different from this. This is not difference of two squares, all right? It must be a negative between the both of them. Once such a thing occurs, it is called difference of two squares. And to factorize this, it is quite easy. Produce two brackets. Write the two terms I have here in the two brackets without squared, all right? I will have x and y, x and y. But then, this one I have here will turn into both plus and negative. So the first one, write negative. The second one, we write plus. We are factorized. So anytime you have difference of two square problem, the same term you have here, write it in two brackets without um, the square repeated. If you expand this bracket, you are arriving at this point, right? So let's consider the next one. I have x squared minus four. This is also a difference of two square problem because I will have this as x squared minus 2 squared. To factorize it, I will open two brackets. I will write x minus 2 and x plus 2, just as I have here. Now, let's consider something before we come back to the examples we have here. If I have 8x squared minus 32, Looking at this problem, I have a difference of two squares problem also. Even though 32 is not a perfect square, 8 is not a perfect square, 
before I can do something to the both of them and change this expression into a perfect square. When I say a perfect square, I mean a number that has um, square roots, just like we have 4 here. 4 has a square root, so it can be written as 2 power 2. Now let's quickly bring out 2. 2 is common between the both of them. If I bring out 2, I will have 4x squared minus, bring out 2, you will have 16. 2 times 4x squared will give you 8x squared. 2 times 16 will give you 32, all right? Now, observe the brackets. I have difference of 2 squares because here is sentence as 2 squared x squared minus, this is 4 squared, okay? So, these two guys can be written as 2x squared. 2x squared, the square will be outside the bracket, all right? Remember, we have 2 here, minus 4 squared. So this is difference of two squares. What do we do? We open a bracket, two brackets, bring these two down. Now I have two X and four. So I'll write two X minus four. The same thing, two X plus four. The same thing I did here is what I did here. Just that I had to reduce this eight and this two first to the index of four and two by factorizing to outside first. As soon as I've done that, I can now factorize using difference of two squares. Let's, let's get back to the equation. The fourth one there, I have a squared plus 5a minus 24. To factorize this one, this one has three terms, unlike these ones that have two terms, one, two. This one has one, two, three. To factorize this one, we'll write out what we call the product and the sum. The product is the constant, the constant, the one that has no variable, which is minus 24. And my sum is the coefficient of the a, or the variable of the expression, which is 5. The coefficient of a is 5. The next thing we do is to check out for two terms or factors of 24 that I will multiply to get 24, minus 24. If I add the same two factors, I will have 5. So what two numbers can I multiply to get minus 24, add to get 5? That is 8 times minus 3. If 8 multiplies minus 3, you will have 24. To be easier for you, write out the factors of 24, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. These are the factors of 24. So from here, you check for two numbers that you multiply to get 24. If you add the same two numbers, you have five. So from there, I picked eight and minus three. Eight and three will give me that. You now check for how you operate it to get what you are looking for. Having gotten this, the next thing I'll do is to add the both of them to get five. Now eight plus minus three, which is same as saying eight minus three. 8 minus 3 will give me 5, all right? So the two factors I am looking for is 8 and 3. The next thing I will do is to use 8 and minus 3 to replace 5 in this expression. So I have a squared plus, instead of writing 5, write 8 and minus 3. But you will share this a to the both of them. So I'll have 8a minus 3a. Now consider saying 8a minus 3a, you have 5a. You write minus 24. The next now do is to group them into two. Right? So you discover that this and this now, now look like what we have here. So what you have common here and here, bring it outside. That is A. A times A will give me A squared. So I factored out A plus. If A multiplies 8, you will have back your 8A. So what I'll have in the bracket here is A plus 8 minus now what do i have here that i have here what is common three is common because three can divide three a and three can divide 24. so i'll bring three outside three multiply a will give me back my three a plus whatever sign you have here is what we have here well i was i was explain that better now three divide 24 will give me eight so i'll write it here now minus three times positive eight will give me back my minus 24. So don't bother about the negative sign you have here. Write the same sign as you have here in this second bracket. When you have done that, 
group the ones outside in one bracket a and three are outside group is in one bracket then these two brackets are same eight plus a plus eight and a plus eight so since they are same brackets take one this becomes our answer the fifth one to factorize this we discover that we have two as equation of x squared so we cannot just go straight and start factorizing we have to do something with these two now observe that 2 is common between the three terms 2 can divide 2 2 can divide 8 2 can divide 24 so open the bracket first and write 2 outside x squared minus 4x minus 12 now if 2 multiply all the values we have inside bracket we have back the original expression so let's get the product of this expression which is 12 minus 12 then the sum the sum is minus 4. So let's check for two factors of 12 that will multiply to get 12. If I add the same two factors, I will have minus 4. That is um, minus 6 times 2. Check for minus 6 multiplying 2, it give me minus 12. If I add the both of them, minus 6 plus 2, I will have negative 4. Minus 6 plus 2 is same as same 2 minus 6. This will give you negative 4. So replace minus 4x with minus 6 and 2. Don't forget your 2. Bring it down. I'll have x squared minus 6x plus 2x. I've removed 4x and replaced it with these two guys. Then minus 12. The next thing we do is to group them again. Inside the brackets here, we group this and this. What I have common between these two, bring it outside. That is x. I will have x minus 6 remaining. x multiply x, x squared. x multiply minus 6, you give me minus 6x. They will come here. I have 2 common because 2 can divide 2, 2 can divide 12. So I'll bring 2 outside, x remaining minus 6. 2 times x, 2x, 2 times minus 6, minus 6. 12. Now we bring down these two. So I have x and 2 to be outside in the brackets. So group the both of them together. Then these brackets are same. Take one. Then bring down these two. That becomes our answer. So we took the same process we did here. Just that because 2 is common between the three terms, I factor 2 outside before I started simplifying let's consider the last question we have here to factorize this x squared also has a coefficient so my product is not three it's not eight let's see the first thing we do let's check out for factor common to the three of them if there is if there is none then we fire on but we have two to be common because two can divide six two can divide 14 two can divide eight bring it outside two times three will give me six then 2 times 7 will give me 14. 2 times 4 will give me 8. Alright, so this is what we want to factorize. The next thing we do is to get our product and our sum. To get my product, I would have used the, the constant here, 4. But x squared has a coefficient theory. Use that coefficient of x squared and multiply the constant. I will have 12. So anytime you are solving quadratic expression or equation, and the variable that has square has a coefficient attached to it. Use it and multiply your constant. That is your product. Then for my sum, it is the coefficient of x, which is 7. So we check out for two factors of 12 that will multiply to get 12. If we add, we have 7. That is 3 and 4. 3 times 4 will give me 12. Then 3 plus 4 will give me 7. In that case, we substitute 7x with 3 and 4. So we'll have 2 into 3x squared plus, instead of writing 7, I'll write 3 and 4. But please don't write 4 first because I have 4 and 3 here. I will have to bring 3 close to 3 to help me factorize easily and bring 4 close to 4. So I have 3x plus 4x plus 4. All right? Then we group the first two and the last two 
I have three x squared here and three x. X is here, x is here, three is here, three is here. So let me bring three outside and also bring x outside. Whatever you have common, the two sides you bring outside, then we open a bracket. What remains here is x because three x times x will give me back my three x squared plus one. 3x times 1 will give me back my 3x. So if this guy divides here, what I have is 1. Come to this. I have 4 to be common the two sides. So bring 4 outside. x remains here. 1 remains here. Plus 4 times 1 is 4. Okay. At this point, take the ones outside in one bracket. And then these brackets are same take one this becomes my answer all right i hope you have understood something in this lesson please do not forget to follow me on facebook and subscribe also to my youtube channel like my videos and share my videos to your friends thank you very much see you in the next video where i'll be considering quadratic equation what i've just written today is quadratic expression remember that when we add a quality sign and zero in this expression, it becomes a quadratic equation. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.